Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show and today you know what this means, we have another brand, black owned brand and today I'm wearing the brand so today this is Real Not Roll clothing and basically what it's about as you can see, Roll Models is crossed out and we have Real Models because it is all about, um, this brand is all about um, celebrating real people and real role models. You know I'm always talking about people that are realistic, that unrealistic expectations that we put on celebrities or people that we look up to and this brand is basically that it's talking about real people that are real that are take that are on a journey that may fall that may do things wrong but that is about growing and that is why it's called real models and it's not about role models because we know that in this era of social media it's all about trying to be perfect and trying to be perfect is not real that's the bottom line if you're trying to be perfect in life it's never going to work because that is not a realistic thing so yeah this brand i really like it it's got a design on the back as well they've got other hoodies they've got other t-shirts so hit them up black owned brand again clothing and we love to see it so yeah real uh -uh. Roll, uh huh. Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Mill Show. Obviously, I'm ZZ, oh. and today we have RV in the house. Of why did you roll your eyes? You rolled your eyes already. It's literally two it's seconds into the really? interview, and I can feel the tired. Tension. Tired. We can't have tired. You got to be energetic. I listen. Yeah, we're lively now. RV decided to come with the whole of Broadwater Farm, so they're all in the building today with me, even though we told him he'd only come with three people, but they're all here, and I let them all in, so I told him if I let all the mates in, he's got to give me an A1 interview, and that's what we agreed on. Yeah. So we've got to do, look at the energy, it's really low. It's got Don't a worry, we're, it's got, we're loading. Did you, we're um, loading. I, I'm surprised that your energy is low, because I saw on your Twitter today that you said that you was going to try coffee for the first time. Did you yeah. try it? No, I didn't get around to it. So. Listen, if you're going to drink coffee, make sure the toilet's nearby, because coffee's like a natural laxative. Someone else said that. Yeah, you're going to shit 110%. Like, if I drink coffee, I'm shitting 100%, definitely. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I feel like I'll skip the coffee. You, or try like a mocha. You know, mocha is like chocolate, hot chocolate and coffee. I could do an ice frappe. Oh, yeah, 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 ice frappuccino is quite nice. What type, what, do you do like caramel? Where do you get it from, caramel. Starbucks? I don't feel like that really counts as a coffee though. It does, because it's still got the, it, well, it depends if you get coffee based. Where do you get it from, Starbucks? Yeah. Oh. Any one of them places, Starbucks, Costco. Yeah, I feel like. I don't feel like I've had an ice frappe and it's gave me a pick me up. Coffee, you need to have like, if you have an espresso, espresso is just literally caffeine and it's like, you take a shot of it and you'll be buzzing. Trust me. I'll give it a go one day. Try it, try when it. When I'm close it. to the toilet. Say again? I'll give it a go one day when I'm close to the toilet. Yeah, why not? So how have you been? I've been good, good busy. Good. Pardon? Working. Good, busy, working. You've got a mixtape coming out soon, right? Yeah. Are you excited? I am. What? I feel like I've been quiet, so it's good to be back. It's interesting because when I told a couple of people that you, were, quite a few people actually, when I said I was like, I'm doing an RV today, and um, the first thing everyone seems to think is just they associate you with Heady One, yeah. as if you're like, you're not your own yeah, entity, yeah, yeah. as if like you're just Heady One's sidekick almost, yeah? Um, but you've actually been doing music for a very long time, about 10 years now, a bit longer than that? Yeah, a bit longer than that. How does that feel, knowing that you've obviously, you've, only, you've got your own catalogue behind you, you've done your own songs, whatever, but it's always kind of, oh yeah, he's Heady One's mate, or he, yeah, he does stuff with Heady One. I feel like my biggest songs and like my most known mixtape was with Heady One, so I feel like that's standard, like, I feel like it's, it's expected. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like most people know, like, me from Drill and when I was doing Drill 2017, it was like me and Heady together. So I feel like that was the come up and that's where most people know me from. So yeah, it's expected. In this mixtape, is your goal kind of to make sure people know you as a separate entity and not associated so much with him? I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Yeah. What is that kind of what you're trying to do with this mixtape? How, how no, it? it's just, I feel like me and Hedy had never been a, like an actual duo. Right. We just made music together. Mm -hmm. So obviously like Hedy's got his own career, I've got my own career and I'm just doing my solo mixtape, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. I wasn't making it with the idea behind that I'm, I need to do my own thing because of X, Y, Z. This is just 
my music. As I said, you've been, for about 10 years now, you've been doing music. How, so far, how have you found the journey? Because I guess, in a weird way, you've kind of, um, like, you've kind of done music before social media was, like, as strong as it is now. So how have you found that transition of releasing music where you didn't really have to, because you're quite active on Twitter, you yeah. do your thing on Twitter. Have, do you feel like you've had to do that, or is it just, like, a natural thing that has come with, the way social media has grown and music. Twitter. I would say in the last five years, social media is a big thing with, with artists, I would say. Before that, you probably could release music and it's, it's up to your music if it does well. Yeah. Whereas now, it's almost like you've got to be a personality yeah, no, and you've always also got to be an artist. Do you get what I mean? Like we did that thing for Graham Daly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't normally, like five, five, six years ago, that wasn't a thing that people needed to do. Do you get what I mean? So how have you, how have you found that? Um, I feel like I've just embraced the new like lifestyle or like how the industry is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like you need to be stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? And like if you go quiet and you're not in people's faces, because I feel like people's attention span now and the way like they consume stuff is very like it changes very quickly. 100%, so yeah. yeah, it's good to be active and have things like posting all the time and that. But I feel like the music's still the core. Right. So I feel like the music is the main thing. I feel like I'll, I try not to be too much on the internet and not enough music. I feel like you are quite a lot on Twitter. Like you do, you yeah. do the, you, you tweet a lot. Yeah, no, I'm active on Twitter still. Like, do you like, I don't, I read somewhere that you said you prefer Twitter over Instagram. I can't yeah. stand Twitter. You Twitter is, is so toxic. I've never been on Instagram and Twitter, I only started using Twitter like that when I was in, when I was in jail. Okay, right. I didn't really use Twitter like that before, but yeah, since then, I just kept on using Twitter. But Instagram, I don't really take pictures. You know? And I don't really sit on my phone scrolling through Insta. Okay. Like, so yeah, Insta's not really for me. Um, I always find it so weird, like when people like yourself come on the show and you seem like really quiet, but you've had like a very interesting background. Obviously you've been out, in and out of jail, well, not, I wouldn't say in and out of jail, but you've been to jail quite a few times. Um, not, yeah, a few, twice, yeah. Um, not for like, you know, um, not for, for small things either. So how does this work? How do, when you sit down, you seem so like, but I wouldn't melt in my mouth. And then there's a certain type of lifestyle that you've led before. How does, I, I don't, I don't quite, I, I don't quite get it. Like, is it, which one is, the facade? Well, the first time I went to jail, I was 18. Okay. I'm 28 this year. Right. So I'm not that same person that I was. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I've grown and I've changed as a person in certain aspects. Right. So, and even when I was that person, it wasn't 24 seven. I feel like anyone that's trying to do the bad boy thing 24 seven, I feel like that takes a lot of energy. No one's really like that. When you're with like your family or in certain situations, you're not going to be that person all the time. Like I feel like what people think I am mm. or how I am, it's only directed to certain people. With everyone else, I'm cool. Yeah, but do you feel like you demonstrate that in your music? Um, or do you feel like the music you put out does, does demonstrate that you are that person 24-7? Um, no, because I feel like the nature of the music and like when I first started making music and the message behind it and stuff, it was directed. Right. So it was like it was directed to a certain type of people. Right. So it's not like, yo, like, who, I, 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 me personally, I don't know no one that's on a bad waiting 24 seven, like at home with their mum on a bad waiting or just out random in a shop mm -hmm. on a bad waiting. Do you know what I'm saying? Like people are normal, but, Certain things happen in life where you might have to, you know, step out of character. Do you, is there, like you said the first time you went to jail when you was 18, do you, do you reg ever regret anything? Or is it just one of those things where it, well, it is what it is, things happened and that's the life, I was in that lifestyle, etc., etc. Or do you ever look back and think, oh man, I should have done better or that was, that was shit of me to do that? I feel like 50-50 is a bit of both. Right. Because obviously, if I can go back in time, I'll do certain things different. 
but I feel like my journey has took me to where I am now and like made me who I am today and I feel like I've overcome that stuff so I'm not really hindered by it much so I feel like I can get over it. So um, I had uh, Bando and Double L's, they came on yeah. about two, about, I can't now, about three weeks ago now and I um, I asked them a question and I said to them, you know, do they ever feel as if the, the, the altercations or the beef that they've ever been in, do they ever just get sick and tired of it? Do they ever just think, oh, this is dead? Like, I just don't want to be a part of it anymore. And like, when I watched it back, I thought maybe they're too young to kind of answer that question. But I feel like you're a little bit more older. You seem a little bit more mature. Yeah. Do you ever, you know, it's well known that you don't like certain people. You don't like people from certain areas. Do you ever just think to yourself, this is enough now, I'm over it? Like I asked you before we started, can you go to certain areas or whatever? And you said, yeah, you can, but can I you? just feel like, yeah, I can go anywhere. Anywhere I need to go, I can go. I just feel like I'm not naive to like what's going on mm -hmm. and what's being going on or what's probably always going to be going on. But it's just like my energy is not focused on that. Right, right, right. So it's like I rather focus my energy on music, my career like positive things, mm -hmm. but that's still a thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can never like pretend it's not a thing and live life like it's not a thing because then that's when you get yourself into trouble. So it's always a thing, but that's not my main focus. Or, like my main energy is not focused on that. But if I happen to, you know, get into a situation, then I'll deal with it accordingly. So are you signed now? No, I'm independent. Do you think, do you think you'll ever sign? Maybe. if. It's the right deal, and it makes like sense. I feel everyone kind of is on this independent vibe now, yeah. and they just don't, they, it's almost like they don't need the, the record labels. Yeah. Um, do you think that's the, do you think that's the, the way forward? Do you, do you have more control, do you, or is it still? I feel like both, it all depends on the deal, your team, what you're looking for. Right. Some people are trying to do the independent thing, it's not working for them. Yeah. Some people are signed to labels and they, they can't wait to get out. Like they're trapped in their contracts and so So, on your mixtape, what kind of stuff is on the mixtape? Is it, because you know my, my stance on drill, yeah. and it's one of, become one of my, I feel like I just have loads of, like all you, you drill up guys just seem to like be magnetic. You just want to come and just sit in front of me. Is it because you enjoy, you feel like I'm just going to go in on you guys? I don't know, I don't, I don't see myself as a drill guy. You, do you not? No. So what do you see yourself as then? An artist. Okay. Or a rapper, or whatever. But, but, but I wouldn't say a drill guy. The the majority of your recently, or would you say is drill or no? Yeah. Or, okay. Fair enough. Do you? So on your album, are you gonna have other genres? My mixtape. Sorry. What's the difference though? This is well, the thing. Like, do mixtapes just have like fifteen hundred songs on albums? They can only have like 12, 12 songs on there or something. Me personally, without getting into it, I wouldn't based on the numbers, I'll base it on like the process behind uh, creating it. Okay, go on, explain it to me. So like an album for me yeah. will be like a stage in my life. Okay, right. Whereas a mixtape could be like a story of things, or an album could be a story of things, but like a mixtape is just like for me, like my mixtape is songs from different parts of my life and my personality. Okay, right. So, yeah. Uh, what's your personality like? I thought you'd be a bit more like, um, actually, I'm, I'm not surprised. I feel like um, you, 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 your, your guys like you or rappers like you, you always do this like really calm and collective vibe all the time. How did you think I was going to be? I thought you, uh, no, I kind of expected that you was going to be laid back and that it was going to be quite calm. But that's what I'm saying. The, the, the vibe that I get from you off social media is that you're a bit more jokey, a bit more, you know, um, you don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, but maybe it's something to do with my aura. No, that is me, too. Right. I feel like there's different parts of my personality depending on the situation or the company that I'm with. Basically saying that I'm shit company and that's why he's giving me the cold shoulder. No, nah, I feel like you've been asking me serious questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I, was, I, I am asking you serious questions. I guess so, yeah. So let's go into the more um, exciting stuff. How's the love life going? You know I love to ask these questions. How's the love life, girlfriend? It's going well. Lovely. Do you um, please her with your tongue? Do you go down? Um, 
we have to ask these questions. I haven't asked these questions in such a long time, so let's get into it. Go on. But you're, you're Caribbean, so I don't know. Do you, do you do it? Yeah. Yes, well done. This is what we like to hear. A lot of Jamaican men, they try to say that they don't do it. Why, do so, why are you so serious now? Because I'll ask you that question. You were just telling me I was serious before. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're like, you're so serious. Like, chill out, relax. Like, it's okay. No, I think, um, yeah, a lot of men, I don't know what it is with men, especially Caribbean men. Caribbean men are like almost against it all the time. What do you think it is? Like, ro especially like roadman. I feel like roadman, they have this um, aura about them that, they don't want to look like they do. They don't. They indulge in certain types of behaviour. Yeah. What I feel is like it? It's a, I don't know. Some I know some people that just don't do it. Innit? It's not their thing, and it wasn't my thing for a while. But I feel like a lot of people feel like like shame, or depending on how what other people think. Do you know what I'm saying? So how do you juggle a relationship and, and your music career? Because obviously what you do, a lot of, you get a lot of attention from the ladies and whatnot. I do feel you're quite hypocritical of the ladies though. I always see you ending up on Shade Bar, you're always cussing someone and saying something about people. Especially the ladies, like why? What did we do to you? Me, I don't, I just feel like, I talk about loads of things. Like you said, I'm, I'm active on Twitter, but I just feel like Shade Bar will post what they want to post. So I could, I could post a hundred tweets in a day and one might be about a girl or females or whatever, and that's the one that's going to end up on the blogs. How do you cope with being in a relationship and the attention that you get from, from the ladies? I don't understand the question. The question's the question. Like, how do you... How, how, do you, how, how wouldn't I be able to how, cope? I, I didn't say you wouldn't be able to. I just said, how do you? So I'll just ask, you know, there might be some up-and-coming rappers watching this, struggling, you know, to to balance the two or also a lot of rappers or a lot of young people they feel like they can't or they whatever so that's why i'm asking you i'm saying how do you how do you balance it is it easy is it is it not or do you just keep yourself away from social media i feel like balancing my career and my relationship yeah. have nothing to do with attention from girls it's more like the time and like being busy right, okay, yeah. yeah i don't feel like girls will stop me from coping with my relationship. What would you say was the kind of like turning point in your career? I mean, I would say it was probably uh, no better. I feel like that was probably the crossover where people kind of maybe started taking notice of you. Uh, but I could be I could be wrong. What would you say it, it was I would say it was the build up to until no better. OK, fair enough. And then obviously, because I went to jail just after Nobel I dropped. Right, yeah. So, like, I didn't really reap all the benefits right. of it. But, yeah, like, I feel like the build up 2017 up until the start of 2018 when Nobel I dropped right. was, yeah. And how did it always, how did it feel for you when, like, certain things were happening, like, something like big as No Better was happening and then you had to go back to jail? What was that feeling? Was there, again, was it that feeling of, like, oh, for fuck's sakes, I've, I've messed it up, or was it just, it is what it is? Yeah, no, that, that sentence was the longest. Right. Like, the first time I did almost four years. That time I did a year, but that year felt longer than the four years. Right, because you was kind of at a, a pinnacle point in your career, you would say. Like, I knew what I was missing out on. Yeah. And I knew, yeah, it was just a, a mad stage. Like I said, the first time I was 18, I was in college, I wasn't really there much. Mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah. Do you... Um, What's, what's, the, um, what's the development like when you're in, if this makes sense, like when you are in jail, do you get what I mean? Do you feel like you as a person stop growing and then when you come back out, is it harder for you to kind of adjust to reality or do you feel like you grow or you have a reflection moment in, prison, in jail and you, you grow as a person or it, how does it work? No, I feel like I definitely had a um, growth in jail, the first yeah. sentence. Mm -hmm. It took me a while. I feel like the first two years, I was still on, I was still on the same stuff, just yeah, like yeah. getting into fights, just doing all the normal stuff. But then I got to a point and I was like to myself, like, if I don't change, like, what's, what's going to change? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, I can keep doing this, but then eventually I'm going to have to do something else. Yeah. Otherwise, this is just going to be my life now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then I made the decision to change, like, make certain decisions and change certain things. And I feel like when I came out, I was out for like, what, two, two and a half years? Mm -hmm. So like I was doing all right. 
that whole situation when I know about everything just came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I feel like even though I did go back to jail, it was just a, like a blip. And I feel like from the first sentence, I feel like I've changed. Do you, um, do you think uh, that there's enough you know, like when you come out of jail, do you feel like there's enough to help young people when they come out of jail? To to because I'm I, I understand that sometimes I can come across like quite critical of certain lifestyles and stuff, but obviously I've never indulged in that lifestyle, so I wouldn't know what it's like when you come out of jail. And then sometimes people end back up on the roads, etc. Yeah. Do you feel like there's enough help, or do you feel like there's enough guidance for young people that come out of no. or when they come out of jail to to better them to better themselves? No, there's definitely not enough help. Right. Like, come out of jail, you're on probation. Probation is not there to help you. Probation is there to protect the public. So all they really want to do is make sure that you're not committing crime or doing anything. And if they suspect that you are, then they'll just recall you. Right. But they're not actually trying to help you mm. to do anything. Yeah. Like I feel like there's loads of agencies, but it's just all waiting lists. Right, okay. like, there's no actual help. So I feel like there definitely needs to be more help. Like, I, 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 don't, I, I didn't get any help. Like I went there twice, came out twice, I didn't get no help. So what, was it the people around you that kind of just said, all right, cool, let, we're gonna, or what, how did it work? Just kept it moving, like every time I was in, I was planning and, you know, I, I never just sat down and waiting for my release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was always doing stuff when I was in there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I had a plan when I came out, so every time I came out, or both times I came out, I just put it into action. <sighs> Do you, um, do you see longevity in the type of music that, that you do? Well, to be fair, like you've had a you've had even, you've had a, a decent like decent run. The fact that you've been around for ten years. Well, even I've never had a clean one though. Right. Okay. Fair I've enough. Never had a clean one. Like when I started making music, two thousand and ten. Right. It was like just I wasn't taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. I started taking it seriously two thousand and eleven or twelve. I went jail. Right. Came out two thousand and fifteen end of 2015, 16, I wasn't really making music. End of 2016, start of 2017, I started making music properly. Yeah. 2017 went well. 2018, I went jail. 2019 came out, I came out. Had a good year, 2019. 2020, COVID. So, yeah. I don't feel like I've really had a clean run. I've been around for a while, and I'm yeah. grateful that, you know what I'm saying, I'm still doing my thing, but I'm just waiting for the time to have a clean run. So what's your hopes for the mixtape then? Do you hope that it, what's the plans? You, you're hoping that you're going to be able to tour it, do whatever you need to do with it. What's, in your yeah. ideal world, like what would be the, the, the greatest thing? Yeah, no, I always plan to do a show from right. like off the back of my mixtape mm -hmm. anyway, like depending on COVID. Like I don't have like a hope for the tape, like yeah, I want it to achieve X, Y, Z. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's because I hadn't dropped music in so long. I wanted to just A, drop a mixtape and B, like this mixtape is me like my story up until now mm -hmm. so it's got like the drill music that everybody like wants from me when i was wearing the belly 2017 it's got like the type of music i was making before when i first started 2010 and it's got like my new music now mm -hmm. I'm saying, so. speaking about the whole um balaclava thing why did you decide to stop to stop wearing it why did you was and did you feel how did you feel was it did you feel pressure no, nah, there's no pressure. I stopped wearing it because the, the reason why I was wearing it in the first place because I wasn't allowed to be with Hedy. Oh, okay, right. And then obviously when my life and conditions changed, I didn't need to wear it anymore. So naturally I just took it off because it was a balaclava and not like a mask or anything. So. Because there was, a, the, I, I think I remember on social media, but there was quite a big thing around it, wasn't there? Didn't, was it did, there was not, I mean, if I was wearing a bla balaclava for the best part of, you know, my career, I think I would be a little bit anxious about taking it off, about maybe what people are going to think of me, or there was, none, there was none of that. No. Really? No. What would I need to be worried about? I don't know. Like people are really mean online. They say some. Yeah, no, I see it. They, they say some like horrible stuff about people. Do you get what I mean? But I feel like I can give as good as I can get. Yeah, so. you do. That's what I'm saying. On social media, you're always you're, like criticizing the ladies, and I see sometimes the ladies are not nice to you in shade bar comments. Yeah. Doesn't get to you, no? No, I don't read shade bar comments. I That's mean, everyone says this, but I bet you've got, you you got a burner is. account, haven't you? No, because you know what is. I'll read the first few. And I'll see the energy, and then I'll just think like, 
I start thinking like, what are you doing? Like, what does your yard look like? What are you doing? <laughs> I know your things pop down and you're just there, energy, you know what I'm saying? Your date is probably low and that. And I'm cool, I'm lit, chilling. I'm not really bothered about the comments like that. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it doesn't affect my day or my life. So, you know what I'm saying? So, um, what, do you have any, I'm guessing you've got a couple of features on that, on, yeah. the, on the mixtape. Um, yeah. Who, what features, or, well, yeah, what features can you, have you got on the mixtape? I've got um, Young Bane's on there, K Trap, okay. obviously, Keddy, Abracadabra, um, Frosty, yeah, a couple others as well. Do you ever see, like, as you get older and maturer and you realise, you know, you might, as you get better and you see more of the world, do you ever see yourself, I don't know, like, being cool with people like Tion Wayne or any of those type of people? No. Never? Never. Doesn't that, don't you feel like that's a burden? On what? On, your, on yourself, like, to kind of carry that type of weight of, like, I don't fuck with this. It's not even that, do you know what it is? Like, we've never been cool, and there's no reason for us to start being cool now. Fair enough. But... There's no... no I, I mean, no I, I, mean I, think there's, I think there's a difference between there's certain people that I don't like, in I don't fuck with in the industry, but... I, I feel like with with you guys, it's a different level. It's not just like oh, we don't like each other. There's like there's a more deeper, uh, more deeper volatile issue there. So do you not ever think to yourself, this is this is dead? Let's all just come together, or am I just living in cloud cuckoo land? Maybe, but it's like I don't care about people enough. You know what I'm saying? No one's done anything to me, and I feel like the internet like forces this narrative that people hate each other, that I don't really care about certain people. You, certain yeah. people that people think that I hate, I don't care about. But do you not feel like sometimes you, you play into that narrative? Um, maybe on the internet, but the internet is the internet and real life is real life. But, you know, people on the internet like to entertain stuff, so while I'm on the internet, I might entertain it sometimes. Okay, fair enough. Um, I was going to ask you a question. Do you actually really think Chick King is really that good, the chicken there? Because I, I, I don't think the chips are that amazing. And I also, I was, I'm quite disappointed. I'm, I'm from Edmonton, um, so, you know, I used to work at the... <laughs> well, I grew up in Hackney. I grew up, I'm, I, I'm from Edmonton. Don't I try to change it now. No, listen, I'm, listen. No, you're repping Edmonton. Don't try to change I'm it not, now. I'm cool. not, I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not, I have not, I don't even, I went to, I went, I lived in Hackney, I went to school in fucking West, like I'm not one of these things. However, I live in Edmonton, but Chick King, right, do you really think it's that good? Because I feel like people from Tottenham, you really lot, you lot go to, you lot go to... I you see Chick King, yeah? yeah? I feel like it's more nostalgia, like, yeah, right, that's, right, that's okay. the hood, like, grew up on Chick King, and I feel like it's better than the average chicken and chip shop. Yeah, but the, the seasoning, to me, it just tastes like pepper. Like, there's nothing going on, really. It's not like pepper. Yeah, but it's just like, it's, a, it's like they just pulled a pot, a pot a, like a, 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 what's that thing called? A container How of black pepper. How many times have you been chicken? Yeah, I, I used to work in Tottenham, so I used to go there all the time. It tastes like pepper every time. Yeah, it was just dead. Like, I was just like, what is going on here? Everyone was making it like this big thing. Maybe the twins didn't like you. Maybe. Maybe if I go there now, it might be different. Maybe, Maybe if I go there with like the right people, they might be like, oh, OK, we'll give you the good batch of chicken. No, nah, if you go there now, maybe they, they wouldn't want a bad review. This is true. That's what I Yeah, You're right. I might I might go there. Influencers always get good treatment, don't they? I'm, by, I'm not an influencer, by the way. Not by title, but... No, I'm, I'm definitely not an influencer. I'd like to think I'm more of that. I'd like to think I'm like now an interviewer. People see me as I've never been an influencer. I never, I've never been that type of person. I don't even like taking pictures and editing them and all that stuff. If I'm an influencer, you're an influencer. I'm, I'll claim that. Really? That's not my job role. People, people use that as their job role. That's their job role. But as I say, I'm an influencer. influencer. So how did it feel when you um, entered into when you went into the charts? How did that feel? Did that feel like a moment where you was like, "Yep, yeah, um, people are finally realizing"? Because a lot of people, I feel, in the industry, they go on like they don't want the stamp of approval from the mainstream world. But 
I'm guessing if you make music, you put your heart and your soul into it, you, there's an element of you want to be recognised. Yeah, no, of course, 100%. Like, you'd want your song to go number one. Right. But I don't feel like it's a thing that you should chase. Like, every song that you put out, you're trying to get the number one. I feel like that shouldn't be the focus when making music. Mm -hmm. You should just make music out of the love for music or what you're doing. And if it goes number one, then great if it don't. But when I hit the charts, it took me a while to like, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was angry at first, because it went number 21, and I went to 20. So I was angry. Like, everyone, like, like, like yeah, people were said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I've, then when I started thinking about it, it's like, yo, like, where I came from and my journey, like, come out of jail, and what, a couple months later, I was in the charts, so. Because I feel like it's quite, it's quite a normal thing now, you know, a lot of um, that type of genre, or I don't even like saying urban, but our type of music, it's now entering the charts quite a bit. It's like a regular thing to see. But I feel almost like when, it, when you guys done it, it wasn't, it was normal, but not as normal as it is now. So did you feel, again, like a sense of achievement of being like one of the, one of the first people yeah. to kind of enter into the charts with that type of music. Yeah, no, definitely. After I got over the, the 21 <laughs> yeah. tracks, yeah. Yeah, I started appreciating a lot still. Did, um, and when that happened, did you see people um, start treating you differently or it was more or less the same? I want to say based off the fact that it charted, mm. just of like the buzz of like my return from jail and the success of the tape. And the fact that the tape was buzzing, like everybody, it was highly anticipated. Right, yeah. I don't feel like it was the chart position itself that made people like, treat me differently or anything. So I'm guessing you are done with that life. Yeah. But, so if I was to listen to your album now, oh sorry, sorry, I keep saying album, your mixtape. If I was to listen to your mixtape, is there still elements of that lifestyle in the mixtape? Because I find it hard when I probably know, you no longer probably dibble and dabble in that lifestyle, but because of your audience and how you've come up and the music that they, the content of your music, do you feel like you still have to almost act like you're still a part of that world? No, not, not exactly. No. I feel like if, you, if you're blatantly not living that life no more, and you're still rapping like you are living that, that life, like actively living that life, then you're capping. So I feel like if that's what your fans are into and like want to condone, then that's fine, like whatever works for you. But me personally, like I feel like my music has changed accordingly. Do you get worried that, uh, that your core fan base are not gonna um, enjoy it or they're not gonna, gonna like it? No, because if the fans who listen to it are only looking for that, then that's still on there. Like, they're still gonna get that. But if you're just with me, for me, or just for good music, whether it's that sort of drill or different type of drill or maybe rap, then you'll just appreciate the music. Well, um, any questions for me? Um, I need an explanation on that little Nas thing. Oh, on what I said? Yeah. That, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, um, I listened to some of your music today. I listened to it before. And it's quite violent. It's quite, yeah. you know, you talk about whatever, killing, whatever, this and that. And my thing is, is that that type of music is just as influential and bad as what everyone's getting upset about Little Nas X in. Yeah. So if I had a child and they was listening to your music and they was listening to Little Nas X, Little Nas, or I just call Little Nas, um, I would be, they're both just as influential. So I don't understand why people are so outraged by this one 10 second clip of him riding the devil over content that is continuously put out, glorifying gang life, glorifying killing, glorifying drugs, glorifying whatever else you guys want to put in your music. What is the difference? They're both just as bad. So do you feel like drill music is the only genre that um, glorifies anything negative? No, there's films as well that glorify it. 
Um, but what I'm talking about... So I'm talking about anything negative, but, not just violence. Yeah, but I'm talking about the people that were annoyed. Is some, I'm talking to my core audience, which is black people. And black people, they don't listen to rock. They're not going to listen to all these other things that they start pulling out of the fucking air. Oh, what about rock? What about this? What about that? Well, you, your kids don't listen to rock. So let's talk about what's at hand here, which is the music that you listen to, the music that you enjoy. That's not just drill, it's rap, whatever. And also, on the other hand, I do talk about people like Cardi B or this new wave of city girls where girls are talking about basically modern day prostitution. I don't condone that either. But my thing is, if you're going to be upset about that, then be upset about everything. Don't just don't just all of a sudden be upset with that. But you're but you're but they're going to let your their child listen to your music. But people got different morals and like might feel like certain things are cool. Certain things aren't cool. But that's so more that, yeah, that. that's fine. But that's why I'm saying it's hypocritical and it's bullshit. And the reason why you're upset about it, which I think is because you just don't like the imagery of two men grinding on each other. So you feel like everybody that has a problem with that video is because of that reason? I think solely, deep down, that's what it is. But they're using religion. Because if you're using religion and the influence, because they keep talking about children, children, the children are going to see it. But my thing is, your children are still listening to music that glorifies killing, drug dealing, and everything else. So how can you be so upset? Like, what more likely is your child going to try and replicate? A song where they have been told that they can sell drugs and they can get a nice chain, nice clothes, or are they going to go and try and find the devil to grind on? Like, like which one are they actually going to be able to do? More than likely, they're going to try and find someone that they can sell drugs with. Because I don't know what the devil looks like. Do you? No. Exactly, like, that. To technically, that was a person in dress-up. There was a person dressed up as the devil. The devil doesn't walk around with a horn and a pitchfork. So that was my thing. And I'm not, con that's the thing, I think people get it confused. I'm not condoning it. I'm just saying, what's the difference? Why are we so angry at that, but we're not angry at this? Uh, it's been nice to um, talk to you. We tell the people when the mixtape's coming out, where they can find it. Um, where they can download it. What's the better? What's the better thing to do? Download or stream? Download, purchase, what? purchase. ITunes. What's the difference though? Because I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna stream it, and then then everyone's like, no, you gotta buy it. Don't like, quote me on it, but I feel like fifteen hundred streams is counts as one sale. Seriously? Yeah, something like that, isn't it? Something like that. That's, that's so. And then you're right, imagine if you're like signed to a record label, you just, there's actually no money coming back to you, is there? Yeah, so you wanna, you wanna, you wanna sell, you wanna download, buy. Obviously okay. stream is good too, but. All right, so tell, tell the people where they can. Um, Rico Vandel, the mixtape, 16th of April, out on all digital platforms. Make sure you go download that, stream that, buy that. Yeah, man. Wicked guys, so you know what to do, like, subscribe. Did, oh, they, they probably know, what, I guess your socials are, RV Pochettino. You can find me, just type RV. He said you can find him. Just type RV, it's got to come up. There's only one RV. Verified. Oh, is it? Are you verified on all platforms? And on the streets. Oh, you see that? This, this is what I mean. This, this is what I hate, yeah? As, as, the, as the interview is closing up, now we get it's the cheeky hearted, side. It's light hearted but now. That's what I'm you know saying. What I'm saying? Like, now the interview's finished, now you want to be like, yeah, questions. and on the streets, yeah. We're done, yeah, relax, I can take a sip of what I've done here, yeah, great. Like, we could have, we could have, but cool. Media training from the end, management. Oh, did you get That's media it. training before you came here today? Look at it, like, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. No, it is. Um, I feel like you should big up your stylist, because your stylist did a really good job with Yo, you today. I big up my stylist all the time. Wardrobe luxury, see what's going on. Can you style me? It's different now. You see, you see what's still going on. I just like to wear hoodies and track suits all the time. Cool, but you have to go through me. Commission. Um, come here. Yeah, it's a business. It's a business going on. Okay, cool. Wicked. I'll. I'll uh, can I? Can I borrow your stylist? Yeah. Wicked. There we go. It's all done now. See, I can think. All right, guys. So you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and thank you for coming on. It's no, been a good one. I can say gang gang today, but yeah. Steady. So <laughs>